Here we are at WrestleMania 30 Radio Row with Big E. Big E, what's the haps? Uh, not much, man. It's a little early, just waking up, but yeah. that's about it. Yeah, yeah I'm good. Is this your first, uh, I mean, it's your first WrestleMania. So is this your second? Second WrestleMania. What did you do last year? Last year, Dolph Ziggler and I. Did. Right, of yeah, course. You don't know. Come now, on, did man. you have to do uh, Radio Row or anything like uh, that last this year? This is my first Radio Row. Okay. First Radio Row, yep. So are the early mornings something that you get used to? Um, it's it's uh it's a little different, I guess, because we we work at night and we uh we travel at night, so it's a lot of late nights. But uh, I'm getting used to it. Yeah, Not yeah, too bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, what 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 if, what's happened this year? Do you think it seems like the fans have you've connected with them this year? Do you find that? Yeah, yeah. I always um I, I felt like I was better uh better as a fan favorite as a babyface. Anyways, uh, I had a lot of experience. Not a lot, but I had a decent amount of experience uh, with that uh, in NXT, being a babyface. Uh, it was something that I felt was a, a more natural fit for me. Uh, so it's been cool to have that fan support. And uh, Did you have to cool. campaign for that? Did you have to tell people, no, trust me on this one? No, nah, I mean, there's a little bit of that. There's a little bit of that, too, because uh, I was stuck. I was kind of stuck in that uh, bodyguard role for a while. And then I had this weird period after SummerSlam when I was done with, with Dolph where I wasn't really doing much, like a month and a half, where I wasn't on Raw or SmackDown. Uh, I then finally had the matches, uh, a couple matches with CM Punk, and then became a, a babyface afterwards. Uh, but uh, yeah, it, it took a little bit of time, but we finally got there. Because it's a weird thing. We're not really used to getting introduced to giants and expecting them to be nice guys. You know what I mean? Like when you see a, a, a big dude, you're like, oh, yeah, he's here to cause trouble. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I guess that's kind of a natural presumption. Uh, but uh, for me, I don't really have. To, uh, I'm, I'm pretty lighthearted, so it's uh, it's uh, you know, I look forward to eventually just kind of being myself on TV, which I think we're getting closer to. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, just kind of just kind of being me now. How long were you always just like a big kid? Because just the, I mean, the mass that makes up who you are. It's one of those things that you could spend years and years in the gym, and you're not going to have legs that look like houses coming out of your body. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely, uh, I'm, I'm blessed genetically, but I, I started working out at a really young age. I was like 12 uh, when I started working out for real, like in a real program. So it was just something I kind of took to and just kind of ran from from there with, uh, but yeah, kind of been bigger my whole life. Never tall, mm -hmm. uh, but bigger kind of my whole life. Did you ever go through a chubby kid phase? I did, a brief one, and I wasn't I wasn't super chubby, but there's some, some pics from, I remember one year in youth football, I, there was a weight limit, and I exceeded the weight limit, so uh, it was uh, it was a little embarrassing. But I stayed on the team and just practiced, but I couldn't play in any games. But it was it was a short chubby phase. Do you run the risk of like if you stop working out or you stop eating right for whatever six months, if you're just like I'm gonna let it go, that you could become a big fat guy? Uh, I think so. I haven't uh, allowed myself to get to that point, uh, but I don't know if you've noticed this, but I'm well endowed in the chest area and one, one of my one of my biggest fears is is the sagging that will incur so i don't allow myself to stop working out or let, let things go because this this will look awful you have to keep Just, your breast perky yes, i have to keep i have to keep the breast perky yes, exactly yes, yes, exactly yes, yes, yes. yep um and do you ever have you ever had that situation like when, when fans are uh chanting about your well endowed chest do you have to, no, it's muscle. It's muscle. It's not man boobs. Yeah, I get the man boobs thing all the time, and, and man boobs have a certain quality that's that's droopier right. and not right. and not, I I bench 575 pounds with these things. Mm -hmm. There's there's muscle in them, you know. So <laughs> I got to fight the, the man boob thing constantly. Man boobs have no purpose. Your chest has a distinct purpose. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, there's been a lot of influx lately with the uh, NXT guys coming in uh, a lot of new talent has been popping up how did the roster react to you when you entered the main locker room and how do you what's the how do you survive that um, I, I think the the cool thing is probably when I first came up uh, what like 15 16 months ago uh, probably at least 60 70 percent of the roster I would say uh, were guys that I was in developmental with because I'd been signed three and a half years before I even stepped foot on the main roster. So I knew a lot of those guys from our time in developmental. Uh, all the guys from the first season of NXT I was in, develop in FCW with. Uh, so there was a lot of familiarity with a lot of the guys. And even some of the older guys, it took a little bit of time, I guess, to get acclimated with people. But uh, I think we do a good job with... Uh, especially like weeks like this where you see the NXT talent uh, come up to WrestleMania so they can start to get familiar with talent and whatnot. So it's not the divide is starting to shrink, I think. Right, and they make it so that, oh, yeah, I remember that guy. Yeah, I met that guy before. Yeah, yeah, yeah and you yeah. got your buddies and everything. Um, were you a fan growing up? 
I was a fan. I was uh, actually, I had a, a, probably a, um, a slight leaning towards WCW. Really? WWF. I was a big Goldberg fan, yeah. Huge what? Goldberg fan. Yeah. So I, I don't consider you a real fan then. Because <laughs> <laughs> when, I was, when I was growing up, and there were the Goldberg, like the WCW and Goldberg fans, I was like, those guys don't know wrestling. Because I, I, was, I was a WWF loyalist. Well, I grew up in the South. And, uh, uh, you know, in Florida and uh, WCW, you know, it was, it was big there. That, that regional thing. Like, I know guys who grew up in Connecticut. They're always like, no, it's more of a nitro guy. And I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> what are you thinking? Yeah, yeah, I hear you. I mean, I loved WWF too at the time, but uh, it was always, we always put nitro on first and then would, would turn to raw. So you don't have that romantic thing that, like, some of us who grew up in the 80s do with the Intercontinental Championship. Oh, yeah, I definitely have a great appreciation for it. I mean, if you look back at, you think of great WrestleMania moments, uh, I, I always think of uh, Sean and Razor, mm -hmm. uh, the latter match for the title at WrestleMania 10. Uh, so you definitely have an affinity for for the title, and you and also uh, you know Warrior and Hogan. When you think of how, how much the IC title uh, meant uh, during those days, and that's kind of been my hope, uh, and still my hope that we can you know raise the profile of the Intercontinental Title back to uh, I think where it belongs. Yeah, uh, you're in the Andre the Giant Battle Royal this year yep. at WrestleMania 30. When you find out you're the Intercontinental Champion. How do you receive the news when you find out that you're not defending the title at WrestleMania? Instead, you're going to be in the Battle Royal. Uh, honestly, it's disappointing. Uh, I mean, any any opportunity to perform at WrestleMania is obviously important. So uh, having the opportunity to be in the Battle Royal is obviously a big deal. But I, I think you, you always want to make a statement of your own as a champion and have a title match. And that's something that I was a little disappointed, obviously, you know, yeah. being, being honest. Uh, but obviously, you know, I'm also excited about being in the battle royal as well. So I, I'd love to have a title match and ha on, on the grandest stage of them all, but uh, this time it's the battle royal, so that's that's the goal. And are people, are, are the guys handling this battle royal differently than most battle royals? So are they thinking, like, we have to, everybody's got to have spots, everybody's got to have this amazing thing, because generally a battle royal can be something you just throw onto a card, but this one has been treated like it's something special and something that can raise up a person yeah yeah it'll be interesting i mean the one thing is when you it's different from the royal rumble where you have uh one man introduced every 90 seconds or whatever the ratio is i think we play with it every year uh but it's different when we, we're gonna i'm pretty sure we're starting with all 30 in the ring so there's not gonna be a lot of room for a lot of crazy cool stuff at least uh from the very beginning but it'll be interesting to see how it unfolds can you sit in a regular plane seat i can um I guess I have the benefit of not being tall, but I am wide, uh, which, <laughs> which which can which be a problem. In, and in most cases, it's not a benefit at all. <laughs> yeah, that, that's true. That's true. Um, I, I find myself often uh, like jockeying for position, and I'm sure everyone who sits next to me uh, I, uh, hates me, uh, rightfully so. Uh, <laughs> it, it's not comfortable by any means, but we, we, we make it work. Do you do? How old are you? I'm 28. So you're a young guy. Do you do things now? knowing that you've got to protect your body and save it? Or are you like, I'm 28, dude, I'm invincible? Uh, I'm starting to realize that uh, I have to take it easy sometimes. Uh, like being able to deadlift 800 pounds is something that I might not be able to get back to for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, so just some of the things that I, I push in, in training as far as like PRs and, and some of the big numbers I used to do in the weight room, uh, I've kind of had to scale those things back a little bit, which is disappointing. But uh, honestly, this is the most, this is the priority, staying uh, healthy, Having a long run is uh, is the uh, the goal. And do you like transitioning over into being famous now? You know, you NXT was big and and powerlifting and everything like this is all big and it's these feelings of accomplishment. But I have to imagine that when you get onto the main roster and you're on TV every week and all of a sudden everybody's paying attention to everything you do and everywhere you go somebody's trying to get a photo and ask you this and ask you that. That it's a huge lifestyle change. Uh. There, there is a lifestyle change. I'm still uncomfortable with the word famous. I don't feel like I'm famous. I, I know our product has a lot of exposure. How many Twitter followers do you have? Uh, I think I just reached 300,000. You're famous, dude. I guess. Yeah. It's weird, though. I don't, it's, it's hard to, to fathom that. Um, but no, it's different, but it's, it's kind of welcome. It's cool to, to meet with fans who are passionate about what you do and enjoy what you do. So that's cool. I mean, it's not, it's not a huge change. It's kind of taking shred. Yeah. Well, Biggie, WrestleMania, Sunday night. Good luck. I hope you win the uh, Andre the Giant trophy. You're going to tell that to everyone who you interview, aren't you? Yeah, the half, of them, the half of them are going to be in the Battle Royal. Yeah, They're like, I don't yeah. have a shot at that trophy. trophy. Do you Best get to trophy. keep the trophy if you win legit? Uh, I do not know. I got to ask. There's, from what I've seen, there's like a five-foot one, and there's another like three-foot one. I don't know which one uh, we're using. If you win, you got to hold it around and bring it to the ring like a slammy everywhere you go. Just a big Andre the Giant <laughs> statue, a five-foot Andre statue. <laughs> we'll do. We'll do. All right. Thanks a lot, man. Thank you.